My people, my people, my people, this is the wealthy guy here and welcome to the My People podcast where we talk with influencers in fashion, business, and lifestyle. And today, I have a very special guest, a very close friend of mine, and his name is Nick Arrington, but I'm going to let Nick tell you a little more about himself, but Nick is a men's style influencer. He is also a model, and he is a brand manager. So, Nick, thank you for coming on the My People Podcast. Finally got you on. All hey. right, it's been it's been some time where I've been talking about having you on as a guest, um, and and you finally made it. We uh, it, it took a, a a little bit of a, a journey for us to get. <laughs> Get to get here today, mm. but uh, nevertheless, you're here. Um, so I'm just going to hand it over to you and, and let you introduce yourself to my people. Excellent. Um, well, first and foremost, thank you for having me. And it has been a long time coming, but um, we've known each other the better part of a decade. So um, starting from that journey, it has been a while. But to get me um, on the podcast has been quite arduous because our busy schedules, you know, we got to line them up. Right. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. And your first question, what I do for a living, um, kind of dovetails into why it's been so long to get me here. Right. So, so but first step, go back to your back, back, back. Go ahead. Right. Wait, where you from and all of that oh, stuff. Yeah. Hit me let's with do, that. Let's do that. Um, so first and foremost, I am from, I'm a transplant in New York City. Uh, love the city, but I was born and raised in Woodbridge, Virginia. That's a suburb about 35 miles south of Washington, D.C. Um, glad to be out of there because we know who's in the White House, but we won't get into politics here. We'll just talk style and fashion. Um, but yeah, grew up in Virginia, went to school in Alabama. Um, and then shortly after I graduated from Tuskegee University, where I earned one degree in marketing and the other in business, business administration, is when I met you. When we both started at J.P. Morgan together. Right, right, right. So um, this is episode four of the My People podcast, and I've had some pretty cool guests on, um, but very excited to to have you here and, and ask you some questions and, and, and talk to you today. Um, so, you know, for those who don't know Nick, Nick is definitely someone that is super, super stylish, uh, you know, he and I go way back to taking photos and making grids of our oh, outfits. Grids. <laughs> grids. Wow. I still have some like in my phone too. Definitely. Like Me I too. have to save those, but we <clears throat> used to, you know, get dressed up for work and like on our lunch break or in the morning, we would like take pictures of, of our outfits, like the suit, the shoes, the watch, the, the pocket everything. square, the top, everything. And then make a grid and then like, post it to Instagram. So the first question that I have for you is like, where did your love of fashion come from? Um, but before we answer that question, I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. I know this is episode number four. Has anyone been on that you've known longer than me? Ooh, yes. One person. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> well, they, they can have that. They can have that. Um, Going back in time to the now the question on the table of where I got my style from, I think I have to give that one to my mother. So my mother raised four kids on her own, um, myself and my three siblings. And anytime, and my mother loves, you know, to put on clothes. She loves shopping. With that being said, anytime she went to the mall, you know, obviously she wasn't going to leave us in the house on her own. You know, who knows what the house would look like when she got back. Right. So we piled into the car, went to the mall with her, and, you know, I would just watch her you know, and emulate my style after hers. Um, she's a really classic woman, always in a suit, always heels, etc. She's always been professional. Right. And um, yeah, I think that's where I got my style from, mostly my mother. Um, and then as I, you know, got older, went to school, etc. cetera, um, got my first subscription to um, GQ, my sophomore year in college. Um, big shout out to Alvin. I know Alvin, you'll probably listen to this. Um, but yeah, it was a birthday gift. And then I've been reading GQ since then. My mother is still influenced. And, you know, it's going on record. I got to say it. You've been an influence. Oh, okay. Hold on. Say but... it one more time. One more time. One more time. And talk closely into the mic. All right. I'm going to get into the mic. It's going to be crystal clear. I won't stutter. Yes. Um, Robert. I know him as Robert. You all know him as the wealthy guy. Um, 
definitely has been an influence on my style. I got to give it to you. Yes, but I, I think that we've been an influence to each other. For sure. Because we do uh, like some of the same things, right? Like in terms of how a man should look and look dressed up. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that we've, over the years, definitely have uh, showed each other a thing or two in terms of, of fashion and, and both have elevated each other's For sure. um, uh, uh, style. So, um, so make from the grids, right. To getting your first GQ magazine, because you know, I've seen the pictures of you in the baggy jeans and mm. the, in the, in the jerseys yeah. and the, in the Jordans when, when you worked at Foot Locker, For your, sure. your high school days. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and then you kind of transitioned when you went to college and kind of stepped it up when you got that GQ and, and realized that there was this whole other world of how men, um, dressed and, and that's how you like saw it yourself and you knew that that's kind of the route that you wanted to go. Um, when did you first realize that you were a style influencer? Um, I think, well, now that term is used pretty loosely, but that being said, I mean, going back to, let's say, let's date it back to high school, right? right? So my senior superlative was best dressed. So I think from then, I don't think the word influencer was really a word or it wasn't commonplace to use, but right. you know, but it was something that right was there yeah. definitely so i think my peers recognized me as i don't know if i influence other people's style but i mean it, in the sense they recognize that getting dressed up was something that i really like to do right um in today's market back to going back to when we started doing our grids taking photos of ourselves i think when different accounts used to repost us etc that's when we started getting traction in the quote-unquote influencer space right yeah right yeah but even you more so than me right because before i really started to focus more so on the wealthy guy you have been doing it you know and you have been getting the repost and i was like kind of doing wealthy guy doing wealthy image doing a whole bunch of different things right. you know when you have you already had like had a go at it um so you started getting reposts and then what did you say to yourself like wait a minute I'm an influencer or right. you there's, know people I, are watching like what kind of what what was your your thoughts so thoughts there was like there's a there there so right. then moreover then you know waking up in the morning or you know shooting out during our lunch break and taking pictures how can we step it up a notch and how can you know how can I monetize this thing right right so I think the biggest repost that I got when it came from J. Crew, right, right, and then they invited me um, to the studio to actually do a photo shoot, and I was featured in I think it was March of 2017. Right. I think it was 2017. Their um, spring lookbook, so that was pretty exciting. And then from there, um, had an opportunity to sit with a modeling agency right. and had an interview there. And then shortly after that, probably like a month or so after that, I signed with them, and then you know things kind of catapulted from there. Right. Right. So that that is a lot because for someone just from posting images on Instagram to actually go from that to being in a printed J. Crew, you know, catalog, right? It right. wasn't as long as a catalog, right? right. It was like however many pages, yeah. but still a catalog, Definitely. right? Of of their products and the pricing and all and all of that stuff, their looks. Um so to go from that had to be pretty pretty exciting oh definitely it was super exciting and it was kind of nostalgic and it's like is this really happening to go like you said to go from taking pictures on instagram to actually something a little bit more tangible right you know uh it was pretty cool it was really right cool. it's like it's like that that recognition definitely right like okay yes i'm doing something right and it's being acknowledged by more than just my friends, right? Because right. On, when you post a picture, right, tons of your friends and people who root for you will be like, yes, yes, this is Definitely. awesome. This, Yes, you look awesome. But to have an actual established brand, you know, uh, recognize that and then say, okay, we want you not only to be, you know, in print, but then also we want to share you on our Instagram. Right. Yeah, that's that's really, really exciting. Yeah, really special. Um, I think it, what made it really cool for me is I was working with a brand that I already loved. Right. Um, lo and behold, I'm wearing J. Crew right now. So right. it's like 
you know, that's the kind of the brands I like to, to work with ones that I already have an affinity to. Right. Yeah. Yes. And that makes sense because those are the ones that you're really going to put your all into the look, right? Because I know you as an influencer, I'm sure all sorts of brands reach out to you to say, Hey, I want you to wear my shoes or, you know, I want you to try this, these shirts or whatever it is. And it's like, okay, I'm not familiar with this, or this is not necessarily something that I love. Do I really want to do this? And I think the best influencers are the ones who stay true to themselves and who influence for the brands that they actually wear day in and day out and love. You know, that's the that to me is the true um, you know, beauty of like influencing because it is real. Right. It's not something that you would just be doing for, you know, merchandise or for money. This is this is your life. This is your lifestyle, you know. So that's what's like really to me really cool about it. So. If you had to say if if you had a list, you probably do have a list, right, of essentials that every man needs in their closet. What would you say are Five essential things. It could be anything. Five essential things that when you open your closet, if you have those things on, you are good to go. Okay. So five things. I think um, solid navy suit, solid gray suit, tuxedo. Yep. Let's say brown cap toe dress shoes. Yep. And a simple pair of sneakers. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm surprised that you said the tuxedo, but I'm not surprised because I know you. Right. Yeah. Um, because a lot of men don't have a tuxedo in their yeah, closet. You, you, you got to have a tuxedo. Right. Like um, a tuxedo that is, you know, either custom or has been altered to your body that you own is so essential. You need it. Right. Like. Of course, you're not wearing it every day. Correct. Right. But when that time comes for you to pull it out, you have it and it fits. Right. Right. Like that is the key. And it fits. So with that being said, you got to ask yourself this question. How much are you going to spend on renting a tuxedo? Let's call it three times, four times. You've already purchased one. Right. Right. And it doesn't really fit right. You're not comfortable in it. Right. You don't want to wear it. You might as well invest in a piece that you know it's going to fit one, like to your point, right. and that you can keep for a while because you don't wear it every day. Who wears a tuxedo every day? Nobody. You know, you probably wear it once, twice a year. You have that black tie gala or maybe to New Year's, whatever right. the case may be. And you really want to, and think about these two these two situations, a black tie gala and New Year's. Those are very special. Right. So you want to look and you want to feel special. You want to feel confident, not in something that you rented from, you know, wherever. Wherever. You yeah. Know? <laughs> you know? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, no, that really, really... Uh, Makes sense. So you touched on J. Crew. You know, I want you, you know, to tell my people what are some of the other brands that you love or that 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 you've worked with. Um, uh, Brooks Brothers, uh, Red Fleece, also by Brooks Brothers. I just did um, a couple of things with them via social media. Um, one of my really favorite brands, Duchamp London. Right. I've done a lot of work with them. Uh, let's say Proper Cloth. Yep. Um, Esquire Grooming. Yep. Scotch Porter. Right. Cobble and Hyde shoes. Right. Um, let me think. There's been um, a hairy shaving. I don't shave anymore, but right. you know, when I did shave, but it was that. <laughs> uh, we, we won't get into that. Yeah, we that. won't get I'll into like... that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a handful. Yeah, I mean, one brand that I have my eyes on right now that, um, speaking of eyes, because I need them to see is Warby Parker. You know, I love Warby Parker. You do. So um, hopefully they'll reach out. And if you're listening to this, you know how to find me. Right. So so Nick has uh, cases. So not just an individual uh, eyeglass case for his, his Warby Parkers. He has like a, a proper glasses case where you put multiple pairs yeah, in definitely um and it's so, leather very yeah nice. is, is is leather is very nice but that's how you know when someone is serious right about their eyewear they come with that case for sure anytime you put something in the case you know that it <laughs> you know that it's serious definitely um so yeah but i think definitely uh just from knowing you and us shopping together for so long we always were in Brooks Brothers in sure. in J Crew, um, in places where we could f- the number one Century Twenty One. Oh man, 
Say it again. <laughs> Century 21. Listen, listen. So many, so many good finds. For sure. Finds that I still wear to 100%. this day from there. Uh, Ralph Lauren Purple Label. Purple Label. Ties. Still you have know, them. Still have them. All sorts of like accessories, pocket squares, all of these things. Toomey from, bags. Come on. Toomey bags Come on. from Century 21. That was like our go like. To. Yeah, I would go to during lunch, after work, go to spot, and then walk over to Brooks Brothers and see Barbara. Right. Right. Remember her? <laughs> and listen, you know what's crazy? Even as we progress in our careers and our price bracket changes. Right. I still go to Century 21. I do too. <laughs> I do too. It, it, you know, like, first of all, the smart man is not going to spend all of his money on clothes. Correct. Right? Like, you're going to find what looks good on you, and you're going to also find things that are timeless and classic that you can wear for many, many years. Definitely. Right? So, a lot of those things that we got from there are timeless, classic things that. No matter when we put them on, we're still in style. And that's what I love about that that place. I don't go there much anymore, but the things that I have from there, I'm like, anytime I pull it out, I'm like, wow, this was such a great find. Definitely, you know? for sure. Those gyms. Right, exactly. Um, so J. Crew, Brooks Brothers, proper cloth. Definitely you want to get down with. Warby Parker, Definitely. you you done put you put it out there. You know I'm a big believer in speak what you want into existence. So I believe that it's going to you know it, it's it's going to happen. You know, that so you know I've known you for a long time, and for a long time we talk junk about each other. Right. We we definitely like flame each other all the time. Um, but then we also flame other people. Right. <laughs> we, I mean, you know, listen. <laughs> when we see somebody looking crazy. Looking so crazy. So what I want to ask you was, what are some of the things that you see guys do, you know, in terms of like dressing up that you're like, no, 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 you totally got this wrong you know what are some of the things that you see that you're like man they 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 definitely need a little more style education right a little guidance uh, i think kind of we touched on it a little earlier when we were talking about you know shopping at century 21 you know finding those classic pieces i think um i mean classics always win don't right. think they always win yep so the things that i really dislike um seeing is like I don't know why baggy things are coming back. I, I'm not, I don't really understand that. <laughs> yep. It'll go back out again. Um, and then, uh, you, have you seen these suits with jogger trousers? They have mm -hmm. like the like the scrunchy bit on the bottom. No, it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Hopefully, we won't see a lot of them. I've seen a couple. They're really bad. Um, and I also remember when we went. We said the five pieces in the closet. Right. Remember I didn't say anything about belts. Right. I'm a fan of side side tabs, side adjusters, whatever you want to call them. Right. So you don't really need a belt. Right. But if you do wear a belt, if it's brown, your shoes ought to be brown. Right. Right? Speaking of, and I also hate seeing people that wear suspenders or braces also with a belt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Right? Like with the clip and with the belt. Oh, man. That is just like terrible, oh, yeah. terrible, terrible. One of mine is... Seeing guys who, you know, they really dress sharp at the top and then you get down to their feet and the shoes aren't shined. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is yeah. such a pet peeve of mine. That looks so bad. Really bad. How can you nail it from, you know, neck all the way down to ankle and then you get to your feet and you've put on unpolished shoes or shoes that look like they've never been polished right you know like yeah. you see that for sure a oh, lot all the time and then if you're dressed sharp you're already gonna have a lot of attention on you and right. people are gonna be looking you up and down more than once and then you don't want them to stop at the shoes and just shake their head Can't right have that right definitely so that i mean you bo both you and i are fans of getting taps put on the shoes right definitely. you get a new pair of shoes you put those taps on it one of the things that I see wrong is guys who don't do that, and then the heel Under the shoe looks kind of like is like a hill, like a side, right? Like, like a side smirk, right? On the heel. I call it, you know, doing the butterfly, you know, because they're 
<laughs> but those that is one of my pet peeves. It's like, come on, man, invest eight bucks, go and get your taps put on. Definitely. It'll it, it will, you know, extend the life of the sole of the shoe. You know, some people are like, well, I don't like uh you know the tap sound right all of them don't plastic. sound like you can get yeah they don't taps. sound they like metal you know like metal taps you can get plastic taps For and sure. they will extend the life of your your soul and it, it won't be doing the butterfly definitely you know but if you have metal taps on you mean business anyway you know oh for sure for sure, for sure. that is that's like okay yes i'm i'm super serious about what it is that you uh, about my shoe game so the top better look on point. If right. you're that serious about the shoe game, everything else needs to be on point. Right. Well, what else? What else? What's another, another thing, thing that some guys do I think, uh, that annoys you? I think you're going to relate to this because um, the coats that you make are absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I um, just want to say that. These really big, oversized coats that look like, to me, quite frankly, trash bags. Right. They're terrible. Um, I'm not sure... It looks like something from a Missy Elliott video, and that was it's, that's not a, a shot at shot at Missy. Right. That was a costume. Right. For that music video, she wouldn't wear that like out on the street, you know. Right. Um. So, if you want a coat to keep you warm, you want wool, wool cashmere blend, wool silk blend, something like that. Classic trench coat. Right. I mean, the thing is, th I mean, those coats are ugly. You know what I'm right. talking about. Oh, yeah. It's oh, terrible. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's been, I would say, over the last two years where, it, the, you know, like it's been a trend, right, where the, there's these these huge coats. Um, but as I said, it's a trend. Definitely right? a like trend. Like it's something that I don't think will stay. No way. Um, stay, stay around the that long. Um. Let's talk about... Oh, so one more, one more. All one right, more, go ahead, go more. ahead, go ahead. One more. So let's say you have a sharp suit on. I yep. mean, it's looking sharp. The jacket fits right. It's been tapered nicely. Right. You're showing a little cuff. Then you get down to the trousers, and there's like a fabric puddle on top of your shoes. Like, yeah. you got to get your trousers hemmed. Right. And not hemmed to the point where you can see your shins. Right. Slight break, no break, you know, whatever your pleasure, but not a baggy mess. Right. Or too, too short. Yeah. Know? My my pet peeve is the too, too short. Right. The too, too short is just, they just getting ridiculous yeah. uh, with it. And then, you know, the, the too long where it's, 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 the break is just three or four breaks. It's right. not even like a full break. It's, it's like, terrible. <laughs> it's just like a lot going on at yeah. the bottom of, 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 of the, your, trouser. the trousers. And then the, I guess the last thing on trousers, like your thigh is naturally larger than your calf muscle, right? Right. So with that being said, your trousers should be, you know, tapered as such, right? Right, right. A simple taper to a tailor will probably run you maybe $12. Right. And it'll change the whole makeup of the suit. Right. Well, I need to come to your tailor, <laughs> okay? Because around here at, uh, you know, the, the, the cleaner, she charges... Eighteen dollars, but I I promise you, I swear, every time I go there and I because I, I just price. I, I recently went in there because I I want to do a video on getting darts mm -hmm. put in the back of your oh, shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, so I went and I I don't have any, so I was like, okay, well let me take a shirt in there and see if I could get darts put in it so I can show it on the video. So I'm like, how how much is it to put darts in the shirt? So she's like, darts. I'm like, yes, darts. So I like show her mm -hmm. on on the back, and she's like, oh, that's um. You know, I, I won't do the accent. I don't want to offend anybody. Mm. Uh, oh, that's um twenty dollars. I said twenty dollars. No way. She's like, yes, twenty dollars. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Like you just you you really yeah, make trying. up prices she's in trying. here. Now, if I now were you? Did you go in there dressed like this, or did you go in like t-shirt? But she because if you look like money, it's twenty. Right, and, but she knows me, and uh, I come in there with yeah, like playing. suit in and yeah. and all of that, so she knows me. And but every time, I promise you, like it was one time I got, did I get it? I got a taper and a hem, and you know, on, in in the past, I paid eighteen, right? And then she's like nineteen dollars, and I'm like. Where no, actually it was it was two two pairs of trousers that I got tapered, mm -hmm. right? Eighteen dollars each it was thirty six bucks, right? So then the next time I went, it was like 
38. And I'm like, um, what? She's like, oh, no, no, no. This actually discount for you. You know, it's really $20. I'm like, but you charged me 18 before. How did it go up to 19? So, yeah. So I feel like she just makes her own prices. Oh, up. for sure. Um, so I want to talk about something else, right? Because, you know, definitely you got the men's style on, on, on lock and we could talk about fashion all day, but I want to talk about an, another thing that you have going on that I've seen come to life and progress over time, which is your, your running, Yeah, you know, you're running. And it's just like, when you first started doing it, I was like, okay, you know, but then once you said, I'm going to run the New York city marathon, I'm like, Whoo, that's serious. You know, like how many, how many, it's like 26 miles, 26.2, 26.2 miles all through the five boroughs and you actually trained for it and did it. So I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, what made you say, I want to run one. Right. Mm -hmm. And then two, what made you say, I want to run the New York City Marathon and then talk a little bit about that experience because you finished it. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. finished it. Um, so first, the why. Uh, you know, you find things. All right, so the why. 2017, the New York City Marathon, one of my buddies, he was running it. He was running for a charity. And I was supporting him throughout the way and, you know, kind of training with him a little bit there. Obviously not very serious, you know, just, right. you know, running here and there. And then when I saw him, um, I was on 139th Street and Fifth Avenue. That's mile marker around, let's call it 19 or 20, something like that. Right. And when I saw him come down the hill and he saw me with my little sign I made the night before holding it up, the way his face lit up and kind of gave him some energy to get, you know, through the rest of the miles, which right. is about five and a half more. Um and I saw like the joy in his eyes and I saw other people when they saw their loved ones, like kind of like cheering them on. Um, I told myself I need to be in that number. Right. You know? And then the following year, uh, I started training with my, my buddy. I was, ju I just mentioned, and I think I, I just kind of got addicted to it right. and then running through all five boroughs, New York specifically, because like I said, um, I grew up in Virginia, but, New York for me is home. I've been in and out of this city for the past 11 years, you know? Right. Um, so I wanted to run all of it. I wanted to run the whole of New York. And it's, it's intense. It's euphoric. It's tiring. And then uh, that last point two miles, that's the most intense. I right. wanted to carry, I wanted someone to carry me across the finish line. Right. But um, made it through. And you saw my face when you were out at one, I want to say 110, 110, 110. 116. That was mile 18. Right. That gave me an extra boost to get through the next two and a half miles into right. the Bronx. Right. Like you, you don't understand like when you see someone in the crowd that you know and you've been looking at other people's backs for hours. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And um, the first, my first time running the marathon, I ran it. The uh, slang, which I learned along the way, is called sub four. Uh -huh. So I ran the marathon in under four hours. Right. Three hours and 58 minutes. So that's pretty exciting. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm addicted to it. Yeah, it's a thing now. I oh, run yeah. pretty much every day. I ran before I came here. Right. You did. You did. Um, I remember that day and, you know, uh, I forgot what I was doing before I actually went outside. <laughs> I think I was taking a nap. And I you think probably it, shooting. I, I probably no. I think I was taking a nap. <laughs> and then you like text my phone um, and I like got up. And, you know, I went, I went outside and right, right on my, right on my corner, um, on first Avenue and was just there waiting for you to come. And it's just like a sea of people, it's nuts. people that look like they want to just fall out people who are like really pumped. But, you know, to your point of seeing, you know, your friend seeing your face there and that giving him like. The, the, you know, more energy to like continue. That's, that's, you know, like I was there, I see you coming. I'm like, yeah, get my phone out, get the record on. And then you come by like, you know, like there he is. And it's like all these people there. I remember there was this, this lady and her family next to me and she's just 
saying, Woo, go John. Woo, go Carrie. <laughs> so her husband looks at her and is like, how do you know these people? She's like, I don't know them. I'm just rooting for everyone. Right. You know, like, and that's what everyone needed. For because sure. I couldn't imagine running through all five boroughs. And you, this was what? A marker like eight, 18, mile 18. 18? That is nuts. That is nuts. So it was my honor to like be out there to like support you and like for you to see me as you're like you know making making that journey so it was it was very exciting for me as well and also inspirational you know not motivational because it ain't make me want to run but (laughs) but it was definitely inspirational like wow I remember when you first said I'm going to run the marathon all the way up until the point where you actually were running it and you, you know, passed me and finished it. So, so kudos to you. You still doing your running thing. Still running. Um, where's some of the other places that you've like run, you um, know, a, a marathon. So that was my first marathon. Yep. But right now I'm training to run Berlin 2019. So yep. I'll be in Berlin on the 29th of September for another 26.2 miles. So now the crazy dream is to run, all six world majors. So right. domestically, we have New York, Boston, and Chicago. And internationally, we have London, Berlin, and Tokyo. Right. So uh, after this year, it'll be two down, only four left. And I think after that, I think it'll be time for me not to retire my sneakers, but I won't run any more marathons. Maybe I'll do a half here and there, but I may do the uh, Marine Corps Marathon in D.C. just because it's home. Right. Um, but I want to uh, like kind of help coach other people that think they can't do it. But all they need to do is train and kind of like mentally prepare because they can do it. If you wanted to run a marathon, right. you definitely could do it. Right. Yeah. But that the, the, the key that you said there was train and mentally prepare. I think that the mental piece of it For sure. is the tough piece of it. Yeah. You know, you're like out there you, by yourself. Yeah, you Until can. Until we see people like you and at mile 18, you're out there by yourself. Right. Yeah. So you can, you know, run right and 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 train and all of that stuff and you know do 10 and do 15 and 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 all of that stuff but to mentally uh get ready and and the mentality that you have to have as you're running Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. knowing that it's 26 Mm -hmm. miles running the whole the afternoon right right so to me that's the part that you really have to be um prepared for um Let's see. So, yeah, no, to me, that's that's very exciting. And I'm also happy to see you continue it. Right. Because some people will do it and then they're like, okay, I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. But now you're like, okay, next I'm going to Berlin. Then after that, I want to go here and I want to go there. So it's something that you have committed to doing. Um, And not only that. You're doing it because you enjoy doing it, obviously, right? Like it's not something that you're just like, okay, I'm going to run all of these, all of these miles, right? right? Then I just think you you were nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Um, let's talk a little bit about. So we, I I mentioned a little bit about um, what I don't like in terms of guys' shoes, right? Not not being shined Mm -hmm. and not getting taps put on. But what are some of your favorite I know I mean I know the answer to this what's what are some of your favorite shoe styles um I'm a really big fan like I said going back to the what we were talking about earlier about classics love the classics love a good cap toe right um if you want to add some broguing to it for those that don't know broguing is just like the little holes that are on the shoe basically for design purposes they're not right. actually holes but um love a good cap toe a wing tip which always has broguing on it usually Love a monk strap for dress yes. shoes. And I'm still going back to my Foot Locker days. Love sneakers. Right. Um, not just running sneakers, which because um, I beat those up anyways. Right. But um, love sneakers. I love, um, you know, a nice, nice cut suit with a pair of sneakers, not a pair of basketball shoes. We're right. not doing of that. Of course not. We're doing like a low cut, low top, nice and I call them unoffensive shoes. Because you can't wear a high top pair of sneakers with it. I mean, people do it, but people do it for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've seen people do it. I don't think it's a good look, um, but you know, to each to his own. own. Yeah, yeah, to each his own. Um, one of the the brands 
that I mean that I still love, um, but that we both loved was Magnani. Oh, for sure. Yeah, classic. Yeah, they tear up that pinky toe sometimes. Yeah, right. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're a little tight until you break them in. Right. Until you break them in. Um, but you know, in terms of the styles that you love, they make all, all of those them. styles. All of them. Yeah, and they are a well-made shoe. Uh, the price point is is great at the full price as well as on sale. Right, Can't, you know, yeah, like definitely. I'm a I'm a really big fan um, of finding things on sale. Right, it's the way to go. Right, because it's like let's say if it, that item is full price, you go back and you look at it and it's still full price. Then it goes down. Then it goes down. Then it goes down to a price that you know you can afford. Right, and your size is there. That shoe was meant for you. Right. That's it. Right. That's why I love uh, Nordstrom Rack. 100%. Nordstrom Rack is a great place to get Definitely. Magnani's. For sure. Yeah. Uh, while speaking of shoes, though, I just something just popped in my head. You have a shoe named after you. I do. Yeah. I do. That is exciting. Yeah. I was, and you know what? It's a cap toe. So um, big shout out to Adrisi Label. Um, they're actually also based in Spain. Yep. And they do um, handmade shoes. And they named the shoe after me. It's called the Arrington Oxford. And it's a basic black cap toe. That you can wear with pretty much everything. You can wear it with a pair of jeans. Um, I probably wouldn't encourage it wearing with shorts. Right. Um, you can wear it with a tuxedo. You can wear it with, um, you know, a basic, any suit. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a versatile shoe. It know? is. It is. It's a very classic shoe. Um, so, like you said, it can be worn with a suit. can be worn with jeans. It can be worn with khakis Definitely. right Chinos. depending on what, yeah. what what your look is but that's exciting right the, not many people can say that a shoe is um so so i think that that is exciting like to have a shoe named after you so i have a client that's bought probably four coats from me at this point so I told him that I think I'm going to, because I named like the Coats, right? Right? They're like the DuPont, the Winston, mm -hmm. the Thane. So I told him that I would name the next coat that I like design after him since he's like my, my number one okay. uh, client. So I might start doing, you know, like even doing that where I um, kind of pay homage or, you know, show respect to some of the people who have been like buying you know like buying from me definitely and, and name but my initial thought in naming the coats was i wanted it to sound like a rich name you know mm -hmm. the winston the alistair the thane the alistair <laughs> i totally get it the wayman you know now have you communicated this to him already i did oh, i okay. did so now i have to do it you gotta do it now you should have, have waited it. until christmas i know i know or until but, he bought another or coat another one be like here yeah, this you is know? this is named after you but no he he definitely, I won't share the name now because I like want it to be a surprise, but he's definitely someone who has like, you know, supported the business and like bought, bought multiple coats. And that is, that's not, that's, you know, my coats ain't cheap. Definitely not. But, but they're not cheap for good reason. Though. Right. For yeah. good reason. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's definitely, you have to be a gentleman who likes the finer things in life. Definitely. Who appreciates the custom coat and something that's going to last not one of these we won't get back into it because right. i don't want to go off but these trendy pieces like right. this is those four coats that he has in the fifth and the sixth that he purchases he's going to have them for a long time right unless an accident happens he spills something on it but right from a quality perspective in the way the the the, the coat is made and what right. it looks like he's going to have it for a long time he knows what he's doing right you know um so i um so I, j crew right Century 21, Brooks Brothers, all places that we shopped. There's another place that I didn't mention, hmm. right? But uh, I thought about this because it's people pronounce it differently, right? So some people say Charles Tierwit, oh. right? So we got so many so shirts, many shirts. and ties. Yeah. Some people say Charles Tierwit. Mm -hmm. Some people say, and this is actually someone from the UK that pronounces it this way, mm. Charles Thwight. Oh yeah, that's. I don't think that is accurate. <laughs> but um, so, how do you pronounce it? Uh, well, I've actually been to Charles Tierwit <laughs> on German Street in London. I actually got a killer dinner jacket from there. It was like in the like tucked in the back back. Like they don't even make it anymore. Right. Cream shawl lapel frog enclosure. It's nuts. And it was in the back. And they, no one knew how much it cost. The tag was missing. Right. Nobody knew anything. Um, I won't say how much I got it for, but you already know how we do. Right. But um, yeah, Charles Tirrett. And 
Funny enough, the shirt that I have on my back right now is from Charles. It's from Charles. Definitely. So not Dwight. Definitely not Dwight. <laughs> Definitely not. I don't know what. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So when he said that, I was like, well, maybe he knows because he's, he's from the, yeah, he's yeah. from the UK, but yeah, I've, I, that was the first time that I heard it pronounced that way in that way, but definitely a good brand to get three and four shirts yeah. when they have those sales, for like sure. three or four for, for one ninety nine. Sure. That's an awesome deal. But for me, even there extra slim fit mm-hmm. is still big like still big still big so you yeah. have to go see um the lady who overcharges you to get right. those darts made right exactly but i think um no actually i don't think i know they have another fit out now it's called super slim fit super so, slim you know i mean but you make your own shirts right now, so, exactly yeah you know, so i don't, don't really even need, need to, go. to go there anymore but um yeah that was always the challenge that i had with the brand love the brand love the ties but the shirts just never, never really fit you. Fit me. It they they always needed something done to them, right? Um, for them to like look good. What else? What other? What other? Those are really the main ones. And then that, my favorite favorite. What's your favorite favorite? I mean, come on, you know it's Ralph Lauren, right? But it's just, everything in there is just so expensive, it and is. um, but super nice. I think that is that um brand. I think is bigger than I think it's a lifestyle for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. I for can move sure. into the Rhineland Mansion. I can move. I could stay there. Right. So people who are, you know, hardcore Ralph Lauren fans, they have, yeah, it's a lifestyle. Everything. They Candles. Yeah. Furniture. Yeah. Everything. Lighting. Lighting. Everything. Everything. Clothes, paint. Paint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I Bedding. Re- uh, yeah. A friend of mine, he had like the wall paint and it was like a suede wall paint. I'm That's like, intense. okay, this is fancy. That's intense. Um, but yes, you're right. Like people who are loyal to Ralph Lauren really kind of like go hard for um, the brand. It is like a lifestyle for, for them. But yes, that is another brand. I found really good finds in Century 21. Definitely. Um, even when I lived in Hong Kong, I even found a couple of good finds there. Um, as well that you know that were either purple label um and yeah it, it it's pieces that i get compliments on still still yeah yeah those those things seem like they never go out of style they won't but yeah no that that is one that 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 you forgot to like mention that is your you know your your thing kind of like my look yeah <laughs> yes the ralph lauren um look how was the Polo Classic? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I think speaking, yeah, I mean Ralph Lauren's all over that, right? But um, I think the Polo Classic is a um, is a really cool event for those that don't know. Um, that's another like a, a debate on how you pronounce something. Is it Vove? Is it Vove? Or it's really think of the word love, right? Right. So it's just Vove Clico, right? Right. But um, anyway. The classic's cool. Right. You see a lot of things specific to men's fashion. You right. see a lot of things that impress you. Um, you lo- see a lot of things that you kind of go, mm, that looks I don't nuts. know <laughs> if I would do that. Um, and the ladies come out and they're dressed very nice. It's a, it's a, it's a fat, we've turned into a fashion show. Right. You know, and, and it's fun. And I'm looking forward to next year. And I think there's one coming up in Los Angeles. I may make an appearance at right. Maybe. Yeah, someone just as someone. I think just, there's also one in Johannesburg. Really? Yeah. Someone just asked me about it, and I was like, I didn't even know that they had one in Los Angeles, but yeah. now I know. So next year, I'm speaking into existence yeah. now. When you first tell me about it, I will get my ticket. Yeah. Because when I decided to go, it was too late. Right. All the tickets were gone. Now, if we both go and we show up together, it's gonna be a problem. Right. So, so definitely it will be something where, you know, it, we have to think about it and it has to be like planned and it's like, boom, here you go. How you doing? Uh, pass me, pass me a voove, please. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I, I think if we go together. A lot of eyes will be on us for sure. Right. Um, it's one of those, it's one of those things. If you're looking sharp, it's hard to stay out of the limelight. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I definitely saw a lot of images from, from it. A lot of classic style, but then also a lot of people who pushed the style envelope and it worked, right? Some people, it, it didn't work, but 
you know, to me, fashion is is subjective, it is. right? And Style the as of well, right? Yeah. Yep. So it's all about who you are. I saw a lot of cool hats. Yep. Um, there. So that's that's you know, I definitely have to get there. Definitely. I definitely have to get there. A couple of people were like, "What? You're not going? Like you have to be there." Um, and I'm like, uh. and then when I finally decide to go, it was like, sorry, bro, no tickets left. Right. You know, and lucky for you, you can just go in your closet and grab something out. You don't really have. Oh, to, yeah. I definitely make a spectacle wouldn't. Of it. I wouldn't go shopping you know? yeah. uh, for, you know, to, to get an outfit for it. I would definitely wear something that, that I have already. So. What is next? So you you got your men's style influencing going. You got your modeling going. You got your, you know, brand manager thing going on. What is next for you? Um, Yeah, so I'm juggling a lot. So oh, I'm, in the running, in the running. Yeah, so yeah. I'm running. Um, I still work in corporate America. Like you said, I'm a brand manager there. So I work in sports sponsorship. I model. Um, I'm influencing. You know, I'm wearing many hats. So I think what I want to focus on for the rest of this year and moving forward, uh, we talked about every gentleman having a tuxedo in their closet. Um, also, every gentleman, not every gentleman, but people tend to get married. And a lot of people, men specifically, don't really, maybe they go out and rent a tuxedo for their wedding day. I right. don't think that's really the way to go. Um, so I've recently in... By email, DM, whatever have you, the bride to be will reach out to me and say, My husband really doesn't have much of a clue on, you know, what he wants to stand at the aisle in. And I want to make sure he's looking super sharp when I'm walking down the aisle. Because, right. you know, I found the dress. Right. Like, okay. You well, you definitely contacted the right person. So I've styled a wedding and when I say style a wedding, it's specifically to the groom and maybe the groomsmen, maybe the dads or whoever else is gonna be in the wedding. Um and I take them along that journey. Like, what's their personal style? What's the color palettes? What's going on at the wedding? What are the bridesmaids wearing? And, you know, we just make sure that groom is looking his best. Right. I've um, styled one in Honolulu. Yep. Houston and Orlando. Right. Um, thus far. And... Yeah, it's been a, it's pretty pretty uh pretty fun experience. Right. And uh seeing the bride very happy when she uh sees her husband at the aisle um or at the altar I should say, it's a um a, a instantly gratifying experience, right. you know. And a lot of p- times when I'm at the wedding, uh especially if I don't really know the family that well, right. they're like who's this guy? Right. You know, and that's what I'm usually referred to as, oh, he's the guy, you know. Right. He's here to make sure said groom is together it's looking good definitely yeah i mean i think that's exciting and i think that there is definitely the market for that service right people put a lot into their their weddings and getting married and more and more men um are conscious of the way that they look on their special day right like i think we've come a long way for guys in terms of them actually caring about for what sure. they look like for sure so i think definitely there's the market for this so i'm looking forward to seeing you dominate it all right and you being the guy the guy, <laughs> the guy. Well, I, I guess i'll leave you with this so when you want it when you when you do get married you take i think there's three instances where you take the most pictures wedding day graduation and maybe I don't know. There's got to be another instance, but let's just use those. You don't want to like, you know, frame your wedding picture and put it on your mantle or your coffee table, wherever it goes. Right. And you look back at it and it's like, oh my oh, God, I look nuts. what was I wearing? <laughs> you know, can't have that. I'm the, I'm the fixer for that. Right. 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 So, you know, the last thing is I want you to tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah. So, um, we can find me on Instagram. Um, you can find me running on the street in New York City. Running on the street. Um, definitely find me there. Usually West Side Highway, but really, jokes aside, um, it's just my name. Just Nick Arrington. Um, I'm at NickArrington.com. Nick Arrington 1 at all my social media handles. Right. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Nick Arrington 1. All and that's the numerical names. one. New, new me- <laughs> right. That's, that's important. Out. That's yeah. important. So, Nick... 
thank you for coming on finally oh, yeah. all right finally got you on um thank you for coming on i think you've been a great guest i think that you have definitely shared some inspiration with the guest and that's what the my people podcast is all about my people that i know um who inspire me and who motivate me coming on and giving giving some of that to the the people who are you know who are listening so that said thank you nick um and for all the people listening i hope that you enjoyed episode four of the my people podcast and to get in touch with me you can find me on uh instagram at the my people podcast um and that's the right with the underscore my people underscore podcast um and you can also find me on instagram at the wealthy guy so t-h-e-w-e-l-t-h-e-g-u-y um and if you have questions or you want to communicate with us in any way you can email us at the my people podcast at gmail.com and It's the wealthy guy, and I'll see you soon.